I woke up in darkness Surrounded by silence So where Where have I gone? Welcome to the Mount of Temptations on this first Friday of Lent. As you can see, we're looking into a deep canyon and you can make out cliff walls in the background, but they have openings. It looks like openings for caves. Many of those openings are just accessible by the birds, but many of them have also been accessible by monks, people who have come to the desert to live a life of penance, prayer, a life of quiet. Greek Orthodox monastery called the Quarantena. So if we're on this mountain, and that's called the 40 Days Monastery, it's very clear where we are. The Mount of Temptations. Beyond the city of Jericho, you can see a green line, which is, would be where the Jordan River runs. And you can see directly, if you look straight into the desert, uh, the church, which marks the spot where Jesus was baptized. And so after his baptism, the gospel tells us he came through the desert to be tempted for 40 days. And tradition has it that he came to this mountain and that's why it bears this name. For centuries and well, millennia, pilgrims have come here to see the place where Jesus was tempted. It's just remarkable that we can bring you here on this first Friday of Lent. So let's start then with what Jesus did right here. To do that, we're going to turn to the Gospel of Matthew and we're going to go to chapter four. The uh, title in my Bible anyway is The Temptation of Jesus, the exact same name of this mount that it's held for uh, millennia. And so this is what it says, starting in verse one. Jesus was led by the spirit into the desert to be tempted by the devil. He fasted for 40 days and 40 nights and afterward he was hungry. The tempter approached him and said to him, if you are the son of God, command that these stones become loaves of bread. He said in reply, it is written, one does not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes forth from the mouth of God. The story continues, the devil took him up on the high, up to the holy city, it's just over the desert mountains to go to Jerusalem, and made him stand on a parapet of the temple and said to him, if you are the son of God, throw yourself down for it is written, he will command his angels concerning you and with their hands, they will support you lest you dash your foot against a stone. Jesus answered him, again, it is written, you shall not put the Lord your God to the test. Then the devil took him up to a high mountain, perhaps this one, and has showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their magnificence. And he said to him, all these things I shall give you if you prostrate yourself and worship me. At this, Jesus said to him, get away from me, Satan, as it is written, the Lord your God shall you worship and him alone shall you serve. And the devil left him and angels came and ministered to him. There's so much in this time that Jesus had here, which is just, you know, um, kind of packed into these words. And so first of all, I wanted to say, Jesus was led by the Spirit into the desert to be tempted by the devil. Led by the Spirit. The Spirit brought him here. The Spirit is who came down in the form of a dove right over there when he was baptized. Now, let's talk about the significance of this. You know, um, I'm going to bring in some of what happened in the Old Covenant in the Old Testament. When Jesus was baptized in the Jordan, he's coming into a whole new life. He identified himself with, with each and every one of us as sinners. His own cousin was concerned. He's like, what are you doing here? Why are you here, John the Baptist? You shouldn't be in this line. But Jesus went through that water to come here and begin uh, his days in prayer and fasting. He came to be tempted by the devil. Part of it, as we know, it says right away, he was hungry after 40 days. Look at this rock. It doesn't look like too bad of a roll. You know, if you've spent um, a day without eating too much, sometimes you feel really, really hungry and you think, if I'm all powerful, I could eat this <laughs> because God made everything by his word. The word is what it says in Genesis at the very beginning and the word, uh, let it be and everything was created. And it seems like the devil himself was trying to figure out who this person was. Uh, the devil heard the thunder in the, in the uh, sky when it was God the Father saying, this is my son. 
he saw the dove come down and he's suspicious. So is this just man or is this the son of God? But what I love is Jesus's answer. He says, these stones, they can become loaves of bread. Bread, the most common food, the food of every day, the food that every single culture all around the world eats every day. But he said in reply, one does not live by bread alone, but on every, by every word that comes forth from the mouth of God. Yes, this is important, but there is a bread which is much more important. Something rather, the bread that strengthens you and gives you life. And that is what comes from the mouth of God. In this passage, our Lord is actually, in a certain sense, defining what our pilgrimage is all about. He's giving us an understanding of what grace is. The word that comes forth from God, the word that creates, the word that gives life, grace is his life. This flesh that I have, the flesh that he has, it can live, but to be living and vibrant, it needs more than this. It needs the word that comes down from heaven. It needs his life. It needs grace. Now, um, one of the things that I wanted to point to in the Old Testament, that 40 days, when you don't eat for 40 days and 40 nights, you are quite hungry. And so when you think about these monks up here, what they've come to do is, you know, silence and fasting and prayer, following the footsteps of Jesus. Uh, but why 40? For the first Christians, for us, for those um, who were Jews who began to follow Jesus, they understood right away what was going on here. There were 40 years that the Israelites wandered through the desert. And when did they start wandering through the desert? When they came through the Red Sea, when they had been freed from the slavery of Egypt. Again, Jesus came here for these 40 days, not 40 years, but 40 days, when he came through the Jordan, I mean, through those waters, uh, left sin behind, the slavery to sin, identifying with us in the desert to pray and to fast. And then he would go into the promised land, which is what happened after 40 years with the uh, Israelite people. Jesus would begin his promised land, bringing that promise to the people uh, that we talked about just recently up in the Sea of Galilee, healing, healing, teaching, giving life. His public ministry began. So we can see just in that how the Old Testament is fulfilled in the New, how the New Testament uh, is enlightened or we understand it better in the light of the Old. And then I also wanted to point out how the early church lived. And one of my favorite church fathers is actually named Ignatius of Antioch. Wrote a number of letters when he was taken captive when the, a great persecution broke out. There were a lot of persecutions from the time of Nero. They were able to get Ignatius, who was the bishop, and they weren't going to just kill him over here. On this part of the empire, they were going to bring him to the heart of the empire and kill him in the Colosseum, and he knew this. And so what he said is also very interesting, which speaks a lot about this, this area. It speaks a lot about what the monks do. It speaks about what Jesus did. It speaks about what the chosen people did when they were wandering in the desert, and that's why I wanted to read it. When he was being taken, he said, you know, you could use your influence and try to save me. Uh, but one of his letters says, I want to be crushed in the jaws of the lions like wheat is crushed to be made the Eucharistic bread. So not only is he speaking about bread and not this bread, fleshly bread, you know, uh, material bread, but the Eucharist, the heavenly bread the bread which is the uh, body and blood of the Lord. And that was in the year 110, more or less. But then he also says, I want to be a sacrifice. Let me be sacrificed. And this is what Ignatius says. If you quietly let me alone, people will see in me God's word. The word, the life of grace, the word that came down from heaven. And then he continues, but if you are enamored of my mere body, in other words, of my flesh, I shall, on the contrary, be a meaningless noise. In other words, the flesh is meaningless. Grant me no more than to be a sacrifice for God while there is an altar at hand. In other words, the martyrdom. 
Then you can from yourselves form yourselves into a choir and sing praises to the Father in Jesus Christ that God gave the Bishop of Syria the privilege of reaching the sun's setting when he summoned him from its rising. It is a grand thing for my life to set uh, to set on the world and for me to be on my way to God so that I may rise in his presence. Get very clear what was important. That word that comes down from heaven. Now another interesting thing uh, about Ignatius of Antioch uh, at the beginning of the church is he had to fight a lot in the area against people called the Docetists. And what did they believe? Well, they didn't really believe that God became flesh. It's impossible for him to have done that. It was below him. There was a lot of influence of Greek philosophy, and one of those philosophies actually spoke about the flesh as something lower. The spirit is something, that is what is great, right? And this is what he writes. Ignatius, who is adamant that Jesus is fully man, and that his body was not just a mirage, and that's what docetism actually means. It means appearance in Greek. This is what he says. He says, we believe, we proclaim Jesus Christ of David's lineage, of Mary, who was really born, ate, drank. He really was persecuted under Pontius Pilate, was really crucified and died in the sight of heaven and earth and the underworld. He was really raised from the dead, for his father raised him just as his father will raise us who believe in him. And I could add, who believe in him by grace. Our flesh will be just like his flesh. We become his adopted sons and daughters through baptism. And then we're filled and strengthened by this bread that comes down from heaven. This Eucharist that Ignatius wanted to be uh, equated with in his own martyrdom. And then he says uh, very clearly, if they are those like the Docetists that don't believe that Jesus became flesh, it's interesting how they're also confused or squeamish, we could say, about the reality of the Eucharist, the bread from heaven. This is what he says. They hold aloof from the Eucharist and from the services of prayer, in other words, of the liturgy, because they refuse to admit that the Eucharist is the flesh of our Savior Jesus Christ, who suffered for our sins and who in his goodness the Father raised. What can be behind sometimes our doubts Uh, of the bread and wine that Jesus gave to us to be the Eucharist. We'll talk about that a little bit more as the week goes along. Perhaps during this Lent, I need to recognize in a greater way how much I need His grace, how much I need to be fed by Him. And really reflect, do I believe that He's given me this bread from heaven? This bread that goes beyond mere bread beyond mere bread. So let's talk about that uh, with the Lord in prayer. Let's take some time to reflect on that. So thank you for coming with us to this desert, to the Mount of Temptations as we begin uh, this first Friday in Lent. And just know that um, our team is praying for you. Uh, We keep you very close to our hearts. We pray for you every single day. And um, just know that you're accompanied during this Lent and God bless you. And we hope to see you tomorrow in the Holy Land. As we finish our time here on the Mount of Temptations in Jericho, reminding ourselves that mankind does not live by bread alone, let us turn to the Vespers for today. To you alone, Lord, we look with confidence. You are ever close to those who call upon you. The Lord Lord is faithful in all his works and loving in all his deeds. The Lord supports all who fall and raises all who are bowed down. The eyes of all creatures look to you, and you give them their food in due time. You open wide your hand, grant the desires of all who live. The Lord is just in all his ways and loving in all his deeds. He is close to all who call him, who call on him from their hearts. He grants the desires of those who fear him. He hears their cry, and he saves them. The Lord protects all who love him. The wicked he will utterly destroy. Let me speak the praise of the Lord. Let all mankind bless his holy name forever, for ages unending. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Amen.